time. It is time. And I am scared. I am so scared. Johns Hopkins. Oh no, they rejected me. Oh damn. Northwestern. Waitlist. Waitlist. That's it's all right. Actually, you know what? Vanderbilt first. Vanderbilt. Oh, it's an L. Lafayette is an O. Today is Lafayette. Let's go. Columbia. Ah, oh, wait list. Ugh. Ugh. Sorry. Princeton. <gasps> Come on. Let's go. <sighs> I'm so happy. Man. I'm so happy. Brown. Oh damn. It's a no from Brown, which is annoying. Duke. That's fine, that's fine. Mm -mm. It's a no from Duke. College decision reactions. College reaction videos. College decisions reactions video. College decision reactions video. What college, college decision, decision reaction reactions video. Reactions video. What so college decision videos are a very strange and weird thing for a person like me from the UK and I kind of wanted to question whether these are a good thing or a bad thing and the first thing I want, want to talk about are inflated expectations now a lot of the people uploading these videos are very smart they go into a lot of good places and they want to portray that to the world they want to portray their smartness and goodness to the world which makes sense because if you got rejected from a lot of places the likelihood is that you wouldn't want to upload this video. A lot of people don't want to welcome the world to their failures. Um, and that's just the human thing. That makes a lot of sense. But it does cause this problem where a lot of the videos that we watch are from people who are amazing and very good at being a, uh, a good fit for a college. Uh, they have amazing AC, uh, ECs. They have amazing uh, test scores they are just very good cool um, smart intelligent people and I did a bit of research in fact so I watched 20 of um, the most viewed college decision videos one week after Ivy Day and I took the biggest 20 um, colleges in the country and I said I'm gonna watch these videos I'm gonna look at the acceptance rates and compare it to the actual acceptance rates so um, the acceptance rates of these 20 schools in the video are something like 38%. And the actual acceptance rate of these schools is 10%. Now I'm gonna put the schools here, like next to the video, so you un like so you see what the schools are. But even there you can see just like the problem of that because um, it's so easy to compare yourself to this person that's online. Like you see, oh, they play football, I play football. Um, I'm the captain of the team, he's the captain of the team. I do all these ECs, he's a lot of ECs. So we are similar, we're the same person, which is wrong because there's so many other factors to your application. Now even for me, I applied to Duke Early Decision and I was very convinced that I'd get in. I was a bit cocky at the time. I had a lot of people around me that were saying, oh yeah, you're gonna get in, you'll be fine. And I didn't. And uh, part of the reason that I was inflating my expectations about Duke University, I, w I was watching these videos, comparing myself to these people getting in. I was like, yeah, that, that, I can do that. That seems like me. But it wasn't. I was a different person to that. And that hit me hard at the time. Like I was, you can see in my um, reaction, I just wasn't happy, obviously. And I thought I was getting in. I thought my life was going to be set from there onwards. And it wasn't. It was full of uncertainty past that. But it just shows how these inflated expectations can be damaging and can be hard for some people to deal with. I'm going to move on to the nature of the videos kind of and how they're very stats focused. How to apply, what stats you need to get in where. I'm going to go over my stats and took my stats, GPA, SAT scores, um, the basics of stats, ACT score. Stats. Now it makes sense for them to be stats focused. Stats are so easy to compare. I might have got something in my ACT, you got another score, you can compare them so easily. It's a number against another number. And this isn't always a good thing 
because if we look at how American colleges review application, it's not just based on stats, it's not based on your academics. Now in the UK it is very academics focused, we have these things called A-levels which are end of year exams, um, we do three of them and they kind of dictate whether we get into our university or not. And um, UK universities basically only focus on these A-levels rather than just like who you are as a person and um, it's completely different in America. So by only showing um, our stats or like one line of an extracurricular and very like limited bits of who you are, it's very misleading and very, um, I think could be damaging towards someone who is trying to compare themselves because comparison isn't always the best thing. And the ACT or the SAT is not your application, it's not just that. Also, universities are looking to make a well-rounded class. So if they've got 10 people applying from Michigan, they're not going to accept all 10 people because they've already got two people from Michigan. They're going to look for someone from Michigan, someone from Washington, someone from California. They're looking for people to be diverse, people from all, all over the place. They're looking for a class that is well-rounded. That might mean not um, accepting someone than 36 because we've already got someone like them. And I think that's part of the reason that I didn't get into Duke was because they probably already had people like me and probably that pe probably people that were a bit better than me but very similar and th that fact probably um, worked against me in my application because they don't need two of me basically and if anyone's read Malcolm Gladwell's book Outliers it's an amazing read you really should um, I, that sounds like I read a lot of books, I really don't read a lot of books. But he tells a story of this uh, Stanford psychology professor called Lewis, wait let me check, Lewis Terman, Lewis Terman. Now this college professor um, did a survey of loads of elementary school kids in California. He surveyed like 250,000 of them and he made them do an IQ test. He made them do one IQ test, if they did well in that one they did another one, if they did well in that one they did another one. And his objective of this research was to find the best elementary school students from California. And he found about um, like a thousand that were uh, like worthy of his program. And he kind of looked at these um, kids and he uh, like tracked their lives basically from like college to their jobs to even like their marriages and things like that. Lewis Terman kind of had an expectation that these would be uh, the leaders of the future, they would be destined for greatness, they would be amazing people and a lot of them didn't end up that way, a lot of them ended up being just like ordinary people, like they weren't anything amazing, some of them were very cool people but there were even two people that he um, rejected from his program that ended up being Nobel laureates and there were no, I don't think there were any Nobel laureates or any Nobel prize winners on the thousand people that he chose. It just so, it shows, and Malcolm Gladwell talks about this in his book, that past, past a certain threshold, IQ doesn't really matter that much, and he, he, he puts that threshold at 120. And past 120, any change, any increase in IQ doesn't really translate to any real world impact. So it can be applied to basketball players. If you look at basketball players, you have to be tall enough. After you get past like, it used to be like 6'1", 6'2". Once you get to like 6'6", six, six or above that, like it doesn't really matter. Like someone who is 6'6", six, six isn't inherently going to be better than someone who's 6'2". It comes down to other factors at that point. And we can apply this to the ACT or the SAT again. Past like a certain threshold, and that threshold is put for different colleges. Past that threshold, it doesn't really matter that much. So like the difference between a 34 and a 36, and the ACT is designed this way, is not really that much and colleges know this and colleges know that past that past that certain threshold that they set or that they have um it, like any increase doesn't really matter and they look at like your application as a whole and Terman actually quoted there's a quote from Terman in the book and it says intellect and achievement are far from perfectly correlated and it's it, it relates to that basketball analogy and it's something that is not considered in these college videos like you see someone getting a 36 and they got into Harvard so you're like oh I only got a 34 I can't get into Harvard that's not the way it works but it's so easy to make that comparison and I know that's somewhat unrealistic but it does happen intrinsically even if you're not thinking of it 
like on the outside, it is something that's going on your head. And if we come back to this idea of a threshold, I was once told that your ACT score, <laughs> if you imagine your your like college admissions like journey as a date, a date you're going on with the university, um, the college, the AC, the ACT gets you a seat at the table. The rest of the application gets you the the the, the marriage or whatever, like the. The, the second date, let's say the second date, um, and I think that's such, such a valuable thing because it, it it would be wrong for me to say that standardised test scores are not important. They are important, but like I said, they just get you a seat at the table. The rest of your person, the rest of who you are, does the talking. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is interesting, and it's about the concept of students who are admitted becoming experts. Now, I know a lot of follow-up videos after one of these college decision videos is like how I got into Harvard, how I got into Princeton, how I got into Yale. And I want to question whether that's like a good thing, whether students should watch those videos and be like, oh, if I do X, X and X, I'll be a Harvard student. Um, it doesn't work, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. And I think something that uh, we should consider is survivorship bias. Now, if you don't know what it is, I'm gonna explain it briefly. And it was kind of coined by this guy, this statistician, statistician, this stats guy in uh, World War II. He was an American guy. And he looked at planes who flew somewhere and came back. Uh, and he like mapped their damage on the plane. So if you look at the, the picture I'm gonna put up, the red dots are the damage, where damage has occurred. And he said, where should we put the armor? You can answer the question now. If you look at that plane, where should we put the armor to help the plane survive? Now, when I first saw this, I was like, oh, you just put the you just, you just put the the plates where the damage is in it, and then you and then you'll be safe. But it's wrong. That's not how you answer the question. You put the plates where the damage isn't, because the planes that got hit in those places didn't come back. It makes sense. And it, we can apply this to college decision videos as well. The people who are admitted and accepted are the best. They they got through the the bombings. They they got through the 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 anti-aircraft guns, and they weren't hit and they weren't damaged in those specific places. This is a bit of a, a bit of a stretch at this point, but the people that you should be listening to are the people that didn't get accepted, the people that were rejected, the people that you can learn from. You can learn to say, oh, I shouldn't do this, then I have a better chance of getting in, rather than I should do this and I will get in. Because something that Malcolm Gladwell talks about in his book is how, well, the whole premise of the book is about how success is far more about luck than it is about the individual. And he gives loads of case studies about how this is true. And um, you should apply that to college decision videos as well. like. Some of the people who get admitted to these places are very talented, amazing, special people, but ultimately they are all, and this is a very large generalization, everyone that gets admitted to a college is somewhat lucky in their life. And uh, if that comes down to like financial reasons, because a lot of colleges uh, take need into uh, consideration, especially for international students like me. So if that's financial reasons, if that's like, economic reasons, where you live, who you are, your person, who you are as a person, where you were born, uh, your parents, things like that. A lot of it is down to luck and is out of your hands. And that's what you don't see from a lot of the college decision videos. And it's for me as well, like, I, in my life I've been, I've been very lucky, I've been very unlucky in certain ways, but my luck has brought me to Princeton. And I can identify that and I think it's something that people should be aware of when they're watching these videos basically yeah. and finally the addiction of these videos and I I and you have felt it firsthand we have all watched a lot of these videos and we know how addictive they are and there's one reason why it's so addictive and it's because of the mystery of the college decision process no one knows really how Harvard how Princeton how Yale how any school admits people, they look at the ACT, they get the ACT, this person got above X ACT score or SAT score, and they're like, cool, this person can get into our university. Now let's look at them as a person. And that is such a more subjective thing to look at someone in person and be like, yeah, they deserve to be here. Like it's not, um, it's not black or white, it's not X or Y, it's subjective. And we 
as people on this platform try to find answers for the questions that we can't answer. We can't answer if being a captain of your team or being uh, some varsity sports person is going to get you into a university. So we watch these videos, we compare ourselves to them to try and get a sense, try and make our own artificial decision about whether we're going to get into this university. <laughs> I do like college decision videos. Like, I, f I feel like this video has been like, a bit pessimistic. But I think they're a good thing. I think it's good to be happy for people. I think it's good to share your happiness. And it's also good to find some clarity in a very confusing time that is your senior year or year 13. So I do think they're good. I just think it's important to kind of look at these videos. They, 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 get, they get loads of views. Like, realistically, loads of people do them for the views. Um, why am I doing a video? For the views, it's for the views. <laughs> But I think it's important to question everything in the video. I think it's important to question whether um, their, their 36 and their ACT got them into Princeton. I think it's important to question just who they are beyond their um, scores, beyond their 10 extracurriculars that you see like a line of. Um, there, there is more to them that got them into this school. And there's more to you that's gonna make you successful in the future, basically. And you might ask what the purpose of this video is. Um, well, firstly, I just wanted to talk from like a UK perspective about these college decision videos and just like university in America in general because um, from us people in the UK, it's a bit strange. Also, I'm just very bored. I'm in lockdown right now. I can't really go outside. I'm a bit bored, uh, as you can tell by my lovely haircut. Um, also, I'm, I think I might start making some more of these videos. I've kind of been inspired by like, if you've heard of Colin and, Colin and Samir, they're cool people. Um, they do like and Tiffany Ferguson, they do like internet, Tiffany Ferguson calls it internet analysis where they kind of like look at stuff going on, on the internet or look at stuff going on online and or YouTube and they kind of like analyze it and comment on it basically and I think that's something that I'd love to do like I hopefully if people enjoy this video I'll make another one about another topic um, but yeah this is kind of like starting my YouTube off on a good foot hopefully on a good foot um, so if you enjoyed, uh, send some love my way. I'll, should I should put my Instagram. Yeah, I'll put my Instagram. I'll link my Instagram if you want to go and follow that. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.